So, playing around with some technologies in my home lab, I decided that I wanted to add a third server with a decent amount of resources so that I could play around with things like segment routing and firepower and some stuff like that. Considering now I'm not primarily focused on a Cisco certification as much as I am learning particular platforms because my new job pretty much requires me to be kind of well versed in data center enterprise route switch and some uh, a, lot, a decent amount of security so I decided I was going to take another server I have an old IBM server with 128 gigs of RAM in it and I'm going to utilize it as my server so I'm gonna show you guys how this process works I'm pretty much going to uh, I'll film it and then I will do a voiceover on it once the video is recorded so I'm not sitting there trying to explain things as I'm going along. It makes it a lot easier just to do a quick voiceover. So let's go ahead and kick this bad boy off. How's it going everybody? What I'm going to go ahead and do in this little section here right here before we actually get kicked off is doing some cable cleanup. It's really important to make sure that your cables are squared away and things like that. So I don't have a cable management rack or anything like that to run the cables and stuff like that. Usually I just try to do what is commonly referred to as a comb back thing where you just run the cables over the top of a 1U or 2U section of your rack that you might have. Now this is a 24U rack, a four post rack that I've had for probably nine or ten years now. And it's come in handy because then it's also mounted to some wood that I've, if you look at the bottom, there's some caster wheels. So it is physically movable, but the problem with it is it's heavy and the caster wheels, uh, it's not exactly a rock solid design. So it does take some time to get everything squared away and stuff like that. So moving it around can be a little bit complicated. Now what I'm doing right now is there's a couple of orange cables. Those orange cables are actually crossover cables that were ran from an old switch at the top, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, an old switch at the top that was physically wired into that switch right there, which is a 3750, Cisco 3750 gigabit switch. So it's all, it's 24 port, all gigabit switches, or all, all gigabit ports on the switch. And that was my lab, the physical switch that was going to be used for the VMware lab that I built. But I've since optimized that. So I'm basically just going to toss them to the side. And now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to remove any cables that are physically plugged in that don't need to be. And I'm also going to make sure that any cables that I think need to be plugged in are actually plugged in. So I'm making sure everything is squared away there. Now if you look near the bottom while I'm sitting there finicking around with the cables still, you'll see that there is a, a black box sitting below all the silver boxes. That's the IBM server. It's an older box. Now, my next goal that I have to go do is I actually have to go through and make some room. So you can't see it because it's kind of off camera, but there's some furniture stuff, a shelving unit, if you will, that was in my way. And I needed to physically move it out of the way so that I could physically pull these servers out. So what I ended up doing is I physically picked that up. It's not super heavy, but that was going to be one of the servers that I was going to use because it's one of the newer servers that I bought. So it's got a newer CPU in it. And so I'm trying to be pretty cautious with the server because I am trying to put it on top of another server that is actually mounted to a, ra a rail, rail mount. So there's two rails on either side of the server that is below it. And that is one of the servers that I'm working with. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a screwdriver to help crack open the top of one of the other servers. And I'm going in there and I'm looking at I'm looking to see if there's any RAM in it. So I'm going to scavenge some RAM at this point. And this is what they also refer to sometimes as server consolidation. So I'm looking through and making sure that, you know, okay, what am I going to do here? I'm going to try to make some room and stuff like that. Now, there is, I just pulled over a bar stool, so that's the thing on the very right side of your screen, it's actually one of the four legs on a bar stool. 
So I'm physically putting the server on a bar stool. And that's going to give me a makeshift temporary workspace to, to play with. Now, the server that I'm physically touching right now is one of the powered on servers. And it, um, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm doing the, the Rob's lazy way of moving my servers around. And so now I'm going back and forth and I'm trying to pull the server that's in between the two powered on servers. Well, te technically the one below it is powered off. It just, power has been applied, but it hasn't actually been powered on yet. And then I notice I'm pulling a cable and that's when I noticed that the there's a cable of two Ethernet cables still plugged into the cable. So that's why I'm walking around the back of the server now. And I'm like, oh, okay, where are they? And I'm like, oh, gee, genius. I can't physically get reach them. So what do I have to do? I go back to the front. And I bring the top server to, out to meet the, the bottom server. And I'm also making sure to check that they're isn't going to get any snags because the server rack is actually a few feet off of the wall. So I want to make sure that I don't accidentally pull power or ethernet out of the server because that server happens to be hosting some servers that are running things in my home network. I mean, technically it's a Saturday afternoon. No one would care if the phones went down, but so I just disconnected the ethernet cables from the server and I'm going to be good to go here in just a moment with that and I'm trying to route them and get them squared away so that they're not in a position that would be majorly a major pain in the butt to deal with that's basically what I'm doing right here so I have a lot of cables in the background or in the in the back of the server and because it's a lab I don't really care about cable management right I don't have I haven't invested into any type of major cable management because it's a lab I will make changes to the server rack every once in a while. So this is just a way for me to go through and, you know, makeshift cable management. So now I'm taking the top server, is still the powered on server, and what I'm going to basically do now is I'm going to slide it back, and I'm going to very cautiously, and uh, at one step at a time, I am going to get the server that is pulled out right now. I want to get it out from underneath of the powered on server. So I'm gonna be very, very cautious and I'm gonna lower it down and I'm gonna lift up the top one and pull out the bottom one. And I'm going to very, very carefully is the goal here, uh, pull the bottom server out. And as you can see, the rubber feet are actually giving me a little bit of a uh, difficulty, but I was able to get enough out and there you go. So I was able to pull the server out without causing any major issues. Now normally you would have a server rails, the, the server would be rail mounted and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Now I'm taking that same screwdriver and I'm going to go ahead and use it to open up the, the top of the server and I'm looking and I believe this is the server where I discover RAM. So now I'm trying to move the lid out of the way and I believe there are I believe there's 128 gigs of RAM in the server, I believe is what the capacity was. So now I'm going to move it off to the side and you can excuse the workout mat that is getting pushed up there. So now I'm looking at that and I'm going, okay, what do I have? So now I'm pulling the fan guider out and I'm opening up the connections to the RAM that's physically inside and I'm pulling it out to see what kind of RAM it is. Now I step over that and I am going to make sure that it is keyed correctly so that it'll fit in the other server because eventually I do migrate over to all the RAM over to another server in a later part of the video which I will show you guys here in a couple minutes. But I'm making sure that's going to work and now I'm thinking back and forth, okay I can the server that's sitting on the bar stool has, I think, 64 gigs of RAM in it, and the server on the floor, I believe, has 128. Combine that to go together, you have 192. So I'm basically scavenging, or it might be the other way around. It might be the one on the floor is 64, the one on the bar stool is 128. I honestly don't remember, but I am based off my count is that would be 64. So it's eight eight gig sticks. So I'm pulling this, and that server on the floor actually has given me a lot of problems, which is why it was taken out of commission. I don't keep things in my lab 
that are giving me difficulty in my lab in there because I mean who would want to continue to deal with difficulty all right so I'm I don't remember exactly what I was doing at this point in time but it's okay so I'm I believe I'm comparing the RAM. I honestly don't know what I'm... Oh, you know what? I know what I was doing. I was physically putting the eight sticks of RAM that I pulled out of the server on the floor into the server that's on the bar stool. That's what I was doing. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Because now it was fully populated. All... forget how many... Uh, dim slots there are for the RAM but now I physically have put that all in there and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a I should be putting or no you know what I'm shifting my weight now so that I, I can get closer to it and actually push down on the silver uh, or I'm sorry the plastic snaps that hold the RAM sticks in place that's what I'm doing so there's that piece once that happens we'll be in good shape this will take a few minutes to work through. All right, so now my goal is to take the lid and place it on top of that server again so that we have a, uh, a lid on the server. And I'm taking the other lid and putting it on the other server so that and I'm putting the fan tr uh, the fan the blower fan guide back in place because there's a little fan tray that goes in, or a, a plastic guider that goes in there. And now I'm pulling out the server that was being held in place. And I believe I'm going to look in here. Oh, you know what? That's right. Okay. So actually, that's my fault. The server that I just pulled out. Actually, let me make take a look at what I'm doing here. Okay, that's right. Now I remember that. So, the server that was on the bar stool is now fully populated with RAM. And that's the server that was newer that I wanted to put in play. The two servers that are on the floor have no RAM in them whatsoever. And I am now going to go behind the rack. I'm going to move the couple boxes that are on the chair, off the chair. Because I tend to specific boxes especially if we're going to be moving around now that switch that I just picked up I'm like wait a minute is this the 3750 gigabit switch and I'm like yes it is hmm I'm gonna put this off to the side because it's an all gigabit switch I'm gonna put the lean that up against the shelving unit that I just moved and now the two servers that I want to have in place are there now I have the other two servers so I'm gonna physically pick up that server and I'm gonna put it on that chair it's going to be there temporarily until I find a better place to put it, but it's out of the way. So that'll give me a place to put it and do the same thing with the other server. Lift with your legs, folks, not with your back. I used to be not a competitive weightlifter, but I used to used to lift in the day, so I know how to lift. At least I think I do. <laughs> All right. So now that I've got that, now the fun part begins. Now I have to go through and get everything squared away, which means I have to try to get the servers to post. I have to try to get the servers to install ESXi 6.0. I went really old with the ESXi 6.0, only because the fact that, well, it's a lab and I really don't need anything super high end to make this work. All right, so what I'm gonna do now too is I'm also running Making, trying to find power for the server that I just put back in the rack in the middle there. That's going to get powered on. So you see the lights light up on the left hand side of the server that's sitting on top of the server that is in, uh, that has a server rail associated to it. 
So we're getting to that point there. And I'm also now looking at... I'm also looking at network cable. Um, so I'm pulling a cable out. I was like, oh, a, there was a blue cable in the back of the rack. I was like, well, what is this for? It's like, oh yeah, that's right. So now I'm pulling that cable out because I'm trying to clean up the cabling as best I can. Because you don't you don't want to just have just lazy cabling, right? I mean, who you who you kidding? So now the fun part begins. Now. All right, so this next section, I'm gonna go ahead and I sped up, but I'm running the cables to the back of the servers from the switchboard, making sure that they're squared away. And here I am, I booted up the, the server, and then I made a mistake, and uh, originally, when I went to go hit the, to enter the setup, and it didn't work correctly. So now here I am, I'm just waiting for the boot option. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to be ESXi. Here we are. The ESXi host is now getting booted up we're going through the install process every once in a while, checking to make sure that the server or the uh, the phone is still recording. So we have that. We're installing ESXi at this point in time, and right about now is when the server decides to be done. So at this point in time, we're basically the server has installed ESXi. I'm going to go ahead and reboot and go from there. All right, so in our next section here, we're actually going to go through and power on the server. As soon as I power on the server, I immediately got a very, very annoying BIOS beep, or uh, alarm. It was a constant beep. Uh, I'm going to spare you the, the issues of having to listen to that. So essentially what is... By doing that, I actually had to power off the server, and here you can see I thought the rack was going to, the the server below it was going to fall, so I spent a few minutes working on that. But um, I literally opened up all the RAM, and I had to physically take out each RAM stick and figure out what the speed or what the size was. Was it a 16 gig stick or was it an 8 gig stick? So I originally took out all of the uh, 8 gig sticks and left them. Uh, and left the 16 gig sticks in, so I would have 128 gigs of RAM, or eight, eight slots, each with 16 gigs in them. So I did that, and uh, went through the post up process, and it uh, it took, and then and then it posted did another beep because the the way that the RAM did dim slots for each CPU were supposed to be set up in the order that the CPU was looking for them in, they were out of order. They were, or they were out of bank, is what they're commonly referred to. So I had to go ahead and I physically moved the RAM slots to the other slots. So there's blue slots and there's black slots. The blue slots are supposed to use, be used first. The black slots are supposed to be used second. So here it is. I'm waiting for it to go, and this time it's going, and I'm like, all right, cool. So now we're actually getting somewhere. Now, there's a 32 gig SD card in here, which is where I install ESXi, and when I went through the initial connection, it showed me that there was 128 gigs of RAM inside the server. So I was like, okay, cool, that's a good sign. So, we have that going for us. The next thing I go do is um, I reboot and I get an ESXi installed. I go through and set the password, that type of stuff, and I'm in pretty good shape at this point. The next thing for me to go do is to wait for ESXi to install, which it does at this point. And once it installs, I'm able to go ahead and I reboot it so that it boots up. So that's going to come up here in just a couple seconds. So now that it's done installing, I go ahead and I reboot it. And I don't have a SIMC connection set up on the server, simply for the fact that it's at the moment I don't need it, but eventually I will. So now we're Rebooting, we're going to launch into ESXi mode now. I go into the BIOS, set the, the right boot up option. We go through post, we see 128 gigs of RAM, we go through all the little steps, and now it's going to launch ESXi. So, you'll have to uh, excuse me, I had a, a gnarly itch in my eye, it's been bugging me all day. So now ESXi is installed, I go ahead and I shut down the server. And the next thing that I go do is 
I want to get the additional 64 gigs of RAM installed. So I install them, which is what I'm doing right now, and install them into the server, and I go ahead and I boot it up. You have to, you have to wait a minute or so, two uh, for you to be able to press the power button. But once I do, um, it goes ahead and I see, I believe it's right here. Once I get the trigger, it goes through a couple of different reboots. I'm like, okay, is there a problem here? I'm patiently waiting. And then it shows me, so I, I don't know if you could see that or not, but I did a little happy dance because I'm showing 192 gigs of RAM on the server. So that's exactly what I'm looking for, right? So now I'm booting up the server and going through and getting it all squared away. And now the server's up, I log in, I set the management IP address, and I'm determining which one's gonna be which. I put the the, the fan guider back in, I put the tray on top, I slide it back in, make sure all that stuff is good to go. And then I'm making sure everything's squared away in the back. I'm moving the um, VGA port from one side to the back. And now I'm setting up that config, and I'm in good shape. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap for this upgrade process. I got both servers up and running, and I'm happy. So 192 gigs of RAM on one server, the UCS, it's got a little better CPUs on it. The older IBM has 128 gigs of RAM on it. So now we get to go and play with more labs. So thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching, I'll catch all of you in the next video.